Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Kilopass with Wei Kong, who's going to talk today about embedded memory in automotive at advanced nodes. So Wei, what kind of issues are we starting to see in automotive at 16 nanometers and below with embedded memory? First, uh, for embedded memory, uh, not so many solutions are available for the advanced process nodes like uh, 16 nanometer and below. below. So the known uh, technologies, uh, we know that uh, uh, that can scale down to the advanced process nodes include uh, uh, very limited uh, selections like uh, ROM uh, and uh, anti-fuse OTP memory. And uh, the standard memories like uh, embedded flash, even the MRAM or RAM, those are not available on the advanced process nodes yet. Why don't you draw this out for us? So what are we looking at here? Uh, what we are looking at is a standard uh, cell structure of our anti-fuse OTP memory technology. Here, the anti-fuse OTP cell is consisting of uh, two standard NMOS cells. And one, we call it WR, means a red transistor. And the other, we call it WP, means a programming transistor. So when the cell is, uh, when, when the bit is uh, not programmed, then it is like a capacitor here because uh, the gate, uh, the drain side of the WP is floating. And when the cell is programmed, we use a high voltage on the WP gate. And then that high, high voltage can break the gate oxide of this uh, WP transistor. And after this oxide is broken, and it's, it is more like a resistor. So then the difference between the capacitor and the resistor in the circuit makes the difference for zero and one. The WR cell here is used for selecting the storage cell WP. So during the read or programming operation, we add a voltage on the WR to open the uh, read transistor to select uh, the uh, target bit. So what kind of challenges are you seeing in embedded MVM? So in the embedded MVM, we know that uh, the solutions in advanced process nodes are limited. Like uh, anti-fuse OTP is a very uh, ideal solution because uh, it provides the features like uh, low cost and uh, scalability and uh, flexibility. We say it is low cost because it uses a standard NMOS to form the, the memory bit cell. And it doesn't need any special mask uh, in addition to any standard logic process. And also it, standard, it follows the standard uh, foundry design rules. That's why we say it's uh, low cost to manufacture. And also it is uh, scalable to the advanced process nodes uh, to 10 nanometer or 70 nanometer and below. So that is uh, not uh, available for many of the embedded NVM solutions. And that's one of the, the big problems that we're starting to run into, right? Because particularly going into some markets like automotive, they want to have that scalability so that they can reuse these uh, designs for multiple generations of cars. Yes, exactly. So the designs of the circuits need to be portable from one uh, generation process to the next node. So then other than the cost of manufacturing and also the scalability, we the OTP technology is also flexible to use because uh, if we only look at the cost and the uh, scalability, the standard ROM is also, uh, can also satisfy these conditions. But uh, ROM is not uh, as uh, flexible as OTP. It doesn't provide the field of programmability. So what are some of the challenges in the automotive market, which are very unique because it's a uh, safety critical and also a forward-looking market where you have to have chips that potentially last, what, 10 years? Yeah. So for, for the automotive market, uh, the automotive community has uh, strict uh, standards on the electronics components. Uh, for example, like uh, the reliability standards, you need to pass all the electric, uh, electronic components need to pass the AECQ 100 qualification at uh, different uh, temperature grid levels. And also you need to meet the safety standards uh, which is uh, ISO 26262, and that is uh, recently finalized uh, for the embedded NVM uh, in about uh, 2014. And then also uh, for the automotive product development, we need to follow the ISO standard on the quality management of all our engineering processes. 
that included the product development flow and also all the engineering resource management and the quality assurance during the, uh, the standard operation of the company. So on top of that, we need to provide the security. And this is uh, something uh, becoming more important because uh, we see that uh, the trend of the automotive electronics or the whole trend of the automotive uh, uh, market is uh, uh, going into the autonomous driving and the connected cars. So s security is very important uh, to keep the, the uh, uh, the root of trust of the electronics and also prevent the unauthorized access to the auto autonomous cars. So one of the, there's a crossover point between security and reliability in automotive. Reliability is a measure of quality over time, but security is part of that quality because if you can hack into the car, the quality is, is compromised. How do we assure that for these chips that potentially are running at the most advanced nodes and potentially will be around for 10 years, 15 years. Yeah, you are right. The security is uh, based on the reliability. So first uh, of all, for automotive customers or for all other customers, we need to qualify our product following the ISO or AECQ 100 standards. Then the standard qualification method is uh, to do the high temperature operation life uh, stress that is uh, using the limited second and uh, test it uh, with a limited time, like uh, a thousand hours. But uh, during the test, we need to accelerate uh, our temperature of operation or accelerate our voltage acceleration, uh, voltage of operation to have the uh, equivalent amount of operation lifetime of 10 years uh, during that uh, limited uh, uh, stress time of 1,000 hours. So that means uh, the least amount of acceleration need to be 87.6. So with uh, that kind of uh, st uh, stress test, then we can satisfy the reliability standard uh, for the uh, either ISO or ACQ100 for automotive usage. One of the things about automotive is that these chips are operating under some incredibly harsh uh, environmental conditions. So your temperature under a hood in, in a place like Arizona, for example, is going to be radically different than it will be in California. How do you deal with that? Yeah, so in the automotive reliability standard, we have different grid levels. So it depends on where the electronic component is used at. We have like a grid zero, which is the most strict standard. That means uh, the part needs to function between minus 40 C to 150 C. So then grid zero applications are used uh, normally under the hood, uh, close to the engine. And also we have grid one, which is uh, operating from minus 40 C to 125 C. That uh, is uh, the general usage in the infotainment or the general electronic con uh, controlling system. So for our products, uh, uh, for anti-fuse OTP here, we are either at uh, grid zero or grid one. And uh, then our stress test will just uh, uh, mimic the operation temperature with uh, some acceleration on top of it. Does that change the how you work with this uh, memory at all? Is it still the same? Is it still exactly the same uh, uh, other than the temperature qualification and, and characterization? Is it still the same to, to put into a design or are there some differences? The basic uh, uh, memory cell technology is still stay the same. But uh, during the uh, circuit design, the IP development, uh, that uh, makes a difference. Because uh, in order to, uh, to meet the different range of specification, we need to verify the design in different uh, extents. And then during our test chip or silicon testing, we will follow different uh, testing items uh, uh, with different uh, product specs also. So security is the one issue that seems to come up more than anything else these days because everybody's always concerned if your car is, is being driven autonomously, what happens if you can get hacked into somewhere along the way? So somebody changes your GPS system, for example, and it causes havoc on the road. How do you control that? What do you have to do in these devices? So for security, uh, first, uh, as you mentioned, that uh, our security is based on the reliability. But on top of that, uh, uh, the OTP technology is uh, more secure because uh, uh, the OTP memory cell is based on two standard uh, NMOS cells and it doesn't rely on the trapped charge or the, the magnetics to store, to store the, the, the bit information. 
So with that, it is uh, impossible to hack the, the physical bit itself by any physical or electrical probing or invasive uh, uh, detection. And uh, that, is, that security level is coming from the B-cell level. On top of that, we do have some circuit design features to enhance the security to use in the uh, entire uh, SOC level uh, security application. And uh, our uh, mainstream OTP module, there, there is one mainstream OTP module called the sec sec uh, secret code that is uh, with the enhanced security feature. For, uh, so from the application point of view, it is impossible to, de to detect the code. So how do you see this playing out in the automotive market? How will this evolve? So in the automotive market, we saw that uh, um, so far the, the electronic components are mainly used in the infotainment system. But uh, the next trend of automotive electronics is on ADAS, uh, autonomous driving and connected cars. So because uh, the anti-fuse OTP has the feature of uh, security and the reliability, so that is uh, some uh, key points for the application in the autonomous driving and connected cars. So that can provide the root of, root of trust for the security element to uh, store, store the security key the, uh, to prevent the un unauthorized uh, access to the, uh, to the automotive electronic system. So, so one of the trends that's happening here is every piece of the hardware that goes into these systems, an automotive system, autonomous vehicle, has to be secure in itself, right? This is part of the new trend about you can't just rely on the software, you can't just rely on somebody else's hardware, each piece has to be secure. Uh, exactly, so each uh, uh, electronic component hardware need to be secure. So that's why we see the OTP in more and more usage for the security key storage for the different types of electronic circuits. Wei Kong, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you. I